I will be one of the moderators tonight, one of the hosts, and I have the honor to stand beside Akim. Maybe you can introduce yourself. Thank you so much, Nuria. My name is Akim Vasa. Uh, welcome to everybody. Good morning, good night, good evening, depending on where you're tuning in from. As I said, my name is Akim Vasa, former Shelter City guest in Amsterdam, coming from Jamaica. I'd like to start with a short introduction for whoever is maybe not that familiar with what is going on in Uganda. Tomorrow, the elections in Uganda start. Right now, Uganda has a president, Yoweri Museveni, who has been in power for 34 years, almost 35 years. And last year, he changed the constitution of the country to remove the age limit. So before Uganda had an age limit where you could not be president above the age of 75, but he removed that and now he is able to be president for life in theory. He has some challengers, but most notably is Bobby Wine. Bobby Wine is a former musician, a, a reggae singer, and he's currently leading a massive youth movement against Museveni and he's directly challenging it and quite successful in, in building this movement. Unfortunately, there is a lot of violence going on at the moment. We heard this afternoon that the government shut down all the social media and we learned a little bit later tonight that they shut down the entire internet. So unfortunately, a few of the speakers cannot be with us uh, tonight. One of them is Kato Mukasa, who is a, a community leader of the humanists and also a blogger and a human rights lawyer. But we are very, very happy that we have Shibodo Awali with us tonight. We're not entirely sure how he uh, managed it, but he is here with us from Uganda. Shibodo is an LGBTQI plus activist and lawyer from Uganda. Shibodo, can you quickly give us a small update about what is going on right now in Uganda and how the atmosphere is at the moment? Well, again, many thanks to everyone. Um, it remains very intense in the country ahead of the polls that do happen tomorrow. We have seen the total shutdown of the internet. Of course, you ask why I, how I'm joining it then, but it's quite a difference now you're here. Um, people uh, who are receiving their subs connection through uh, mobile, uh, mobile companies are unable to get online because then the companies have been forced to switch off all their users. But for now, we as a special HRDs are doing our best to keep safe, but also remain on the lookout to ensure that human rights are still respected where possible within this very uh, hard situation. Thank you so much for being here with us. We have with us uh, Fred Eddie Mukasa, who is the brother of Kato Mukasa. He's currently in the Netherlands because he's trying to sue his president, Museveni, at the International Criminal Court. Fred, could you tell us and the audience from your perspective, what is at stake during these elections? It appears uh, everything is at stake the, during these elections. President Museveni has never got a challenger as serious, I think, as uh, Bobby Wine. The youth being the majority in Uganda are quite interested in getting the change they deserve. Thank you so much, Fred. Before we move over to Nafa, Rebecca, I wanted to share a statement that Bobby White made in January of this year, and this was after him being uh, detained, basically, for the third time. He said, the campaign is crazy. It's like a war and a battlefield. Every day we are met with heavily armed military forces. It's always tear gas and grenades, live bullets and beatings. So just to give some context to the situation that is going on, and he himself has experienced the violence. We also have uh, Rebecca Nava here with us. She is the coordinator of the party of Bobby Wine, the national unity platform here in the Netherlands and in Belgium. Rebecca, thank you so much for being here with us as well. Thank you too for hosting me here. Well, if at all I was in Uganda and I could turn up for a talk show putting on this beret, it would be illegal. I would be arrested. This is how we identify ourselves at the, as the National Unity Platform with this beret. It's been one of the worst electoral processes that Ugandans have ever seen. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, during November, when 
the presidential candidate was arrested, a Honorable Chagulan Sengam. The government reported around 50 people were killed, but we on social media, we saw more dead bodies lying on the streets of uh, not only Kampala, the capital city, but all over the country. Abductions have been going on. Um, I, the, I think it's like two weeks back or three when uh, still Bobby Wine went to campaign on the islands. They sent in troops and troops to go capture him. He was flown in a chopper back to Kampala and the whole campaign team was arrested. Taken uh, into, uh, we saw women being arrested with men in the same cells, being put on the ground. It was, they were being humiliated. So if, so let's say Bobby Wine wins the elections. Um, what happens then? How big of a change do you think that there will, for example, be a peaceful transition? Do you think that Museveni will recognize the outcome? And also, even if he recognizes it and he gets, he becomes president, is it fixed? Or do you feel that 34 years of Museveni is in the veins of the institutions of Uganda? This hasn't been an ordinary, an ordinary election. This is a revolutionary election. We've seen um, everyone participating in this election, regardless of their age, regardless of their tribe, this election has brought us together. Gone are the days when uh, Ugandans were being separated that I come from the West, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be supporting this one. But I saw people from the North, East, West, Central, all rallying behind one person. So um, everything is at stake, but uh, we are also still hopeful, regardless of everything that is happening, we are still hopeful, like we, the National Unity Platform of the People Power Movement, we believe that the power is for the people. And the difference this time is we have a power, a power of the internet. Mm -hmm. At least Ugandans were able to access the internet. Those things have been happening, but this time we got to know more because people were having cameras. That's why we see today that the government had to move on to switch the internet off because they realize that they are being exposed. Uh, gone are the days when uh, General Yoweri used to come and tell the whites that I am a democratic leader. But this time we've exposed him so much, they've seen the dictator that he is. Uh, yesterday, while Museveni, uh, he always inter intimidates people. Uh, he brought out the choppers, the armors, and then they were moving. But people were recording everything and they were saying, no, not this time, we, you won't scare us. In fact, you're going. And that's, uh, it's the hope that I, I still hold for the Ugandans. Uh, during the polls, after the polls, revolutionaries don't stop until the work is done. Because we know even if you keep quiet, you will die. So talk and die, at least you would have left a mark. I have to state here very clearly that Bobby Wine and everyone else, we know that it will be very hard for him to be declared the winner. Mm -hmm. These elections are organized by M7. The person who is in control of the elections was the prosecutor who prosecuted uh, Besige for fictitious crimes of rape. So he was awarded with the post of the judge and subsequently elevated the chairman electoral commission. Uh, just last year, the entire electoral commission was shaken up. Seven people were sacked at the orders of Museveni. So we all know that no one is going to declare Bobby Wine a president. Mm. However, this is a statement from the people of Uganda. What is happening now, as Nava is saying, what we are seeing is a real revolution. So whatever happens from tomorrow, I think Bobby Wanda has already made his mark. It happens that as Uganda goes to the polls tomorrow, the LGBTIQ plus community is one community that is not sure as to whether they are part of this whole system. I mean, um, again, I agree with Nava and Mukas uh, and, 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 and Fred said much earlier that this is a revolution. It is not an ordinary vote. We are speaking about a younger musician from the ghetto or the slums coming in to go for the highest uh, position in the country against people who are so 
part of a military regime who are generals, people who have been in power for over 35 years down the road and as, as have immersed themselves in the system in a way that it does not provide for democracy for everyone. But again, when we look into the spectrum from the angle of the LGBTIQ community and LGBTIQ rights, uh, this is a topic that has been used over time, especially by the incumbent, to continue to consolidate his power and also brings it out at a time when Ugandans are going to go to elections. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Arne Dornebal. I've been an Africa journalist for the last almost 20 years. And in December 2020, I published a book about Uganda. It's called Uganda under President Museveni. It's basically describing the period between 1980 and 2020, starting with the coming um, into power of the regime of Yoweri Museveni, which they did through a five-year armed struggle, which is known as the Bush War, starting in 1981 with a small group of rebels eventually taking over the entire country in 1986. Mr. Museveni has been in power ever since. I just returned from Uganda this morning because I was there to cover the elections of 2021. They were much anticipated. There was a strong competitor for Mr. Museveni, who was 38-year-old reggae singer Bobby Wine, who actually wanted to become the new president of Uganda. The run-up to the elections had been long, quite chaotic and also violent, with opposition candidates being arrested numerous times, including Bobby Wine himself. He was arrested several times. Also, his supporters were arrested, um, dozens of them still remaining in prison up to today, uh, and also other people in his entourage were in jail. The official results of the 2021 elections have been announced by the Electoral Commission on Saturday afternoon giving Museveni a new term in office of five years, having scored 59% of the votes, while Bobby Wine received 35% of the votes. However, the results were immediately contested by Bobby Wine because he says he received more votes. He also claimed he has evidence of that, which his, he and his team are currently busy collecting. If you look at the electoral map of Uganda, there's a couple of regions. This is the home region of Bobby Wine and his movement. This is where they scored a very high percentage of the voters, up to 75-80% in some areas. Kampala, uh, almost all the ministers and members of parliament of the ruling party there uh, did not win re-election. They were replaced by members from the Bobby Wines party, the NUP. And here, this is the home region of Mr. Museveni, where he scored a big a victory and then contested, contested results um, are, can also be expected from this region and here this side, uh, because in both areas uh, were, they were won by uh, the ruling NRM, while uh, Mr. Wine, or Tsagolangi, as he is officially called, say that they scored better also in those areas. Plus, in Kampala, they said their victory was actually much larger than the 75 to 80 percent. So, uh, we can expect a challenge in court. Uh, it's been a bit difficult because there was a lot of security presence during the elections. Also, the internet had been cut off for four full days, making it basically difficult for the opposition to gather, you know, evidence like in the form of photographs of, of results from every polling station in the country because that was their plan. They would collect the results from all the polling stations in the country so that they could tally them uh, independently from the official electoral commission so that they could see whether or not there would be a difference. So while that all of is being compiled, it's being made extremely hard because members of Bobby Wine's NUP party uh, are currently being prosecuted. Um, the army is looking for them. Mr. Wine himself has been under house arrest since at least Friday afternoon when the army sealed off uh, the premises. Actually, I was also there on Saturday and a few hours before the official results were announced and we were as journalists chased away by military men who did not want us to have access to him. He is limited in his communications. Also, the ambassador of the United States um, this week wanted to give, get access uh, to Mr. Wine's residence to speak to him. She was also not allowed uh, permission. So the final results are out. Uh, we can still expect legal challenges while the presidential candidate is still under military 
house arrest. The playing field was absolutely not level. The ruling candidate could do a lot of campaigning, etc., while his opponents suffered from being tear gassed, being arrested, um, and blocked at several instances. And with that, we came to the end uh, of this very special program. Um, I want to say a big, big thank you to uh, our speakers for joining us tonight, for making the time to join us, but also for opening up and, and sharing all this. And, and of course, especially for all the work that you do, it's unbelievable how strong you all are. Um, and I think I speak at least for us, but I hope also for the audience that uh, we're in awe with that.